Now, after understanding the J.J. Thompson's model of an atom and under by understanding the drawbacks which the model was having, let us move to the experiment which failed the J.J. Thompson's model of atom. The, it was Rutherford's mo and its students uh, alpha particle scattering experiment which proved the J.J. Thompson's model atom wrong. They actually, Rutherford was studying the radioactivity, mainly the alpha particle rays and he was trying to find out that for, from how much of thickness, through how much of thickness the alpha particles are able to pass through. Now while doing so, he came across to a certain very uh, astonishing and very uh, different kind of observations. The experiment was like this. A source of a radioactive material was taken in a shield which was emitting out alpha particles beam. Now these alpha particles beam were actually allowed to pass through the gold foil and he was trying to find out how much thick the gold foil he can take so that he can stop the beam of the alpha particles. The gold foil was taken almost up to the thickness of around 10 nanometer which is very small. Now when he was trying to pass these gold, uh, alpha particle beams through the thin gold foil. In order to find out that whether they are able to pass through this gold foil or not, he placed a zinc sulfide, a fluorescent zinc sulfide plate on the other side, which is acting as a screen. We can also use a photographic uh, uh, plate for this. Now the, as the alpha particles were allowed to pass through this thin gold foil, what do you observe that most of the alpha particles were able to pass through this thin gold foil without any deflection and he was able to observe the marks of these alpha particles striking the zinc sulfide plate. But to his surprise, he also came to know that there are certain alpha particles which are getting deflected from the thin gold foil and they are moving back. To observe them, he placed certain plates on the, these sides also and this is how you observe that certain alpha particles are bouncing back also. Now Rutherford along with the students then did a complete uh, study on this. He counted the number of alpha particles being coming, uh, emitted out, the number of alpha particles passing through without any deflection, number of alpha particles deflected by small angles and number of alpha particles deflected by large angles. Large angles means suddenly getting bounced back with an angle of almost 180 degree. Now all his observations were actually given certain, uh, were written in certain points and on the basis of these observations, he came with his own model which is actually called Rutherford's model of atom. But it was his, this alpha particle scattering experiment which proved the J.J. Thompson's model wrong. Now, what was his observations? Let us first find out. First, most of the alpha particles are able to pass through the gold foil without any deflection. Few were deflected by small angles and very few which is 1 in 20,000 were deflected by large angles that means almost bounced back. Now on the basis of all these observations, the Rutherford gave his own model of atom which is called 
Rutherford's model of atom. Now let us see his model of atom. Now in the Rutherford's model of atom, he assumed that the atoms are of course spherical in shape. The atoms are spherical in shape. Now, he said that the whole of the mass of the atom along with the, all the positive charge is concentrated in the atom in a very, very small space which is lying at the center of the atom and this is called nucleus. Now, why, he, why he, con he concluded to this kind of a statement? The reason is because what he observed that most of the alpha particles were able to pass through the thin gold foil without any deflection, which means what? Most of the atom is empty. Now, whatever the number of alpha particles which were able to get deflected by small or by the large angles, they are getting deflected because alpha particle itself is having what? A charge of plus 2 units. When a positively charged particle is deflected, it means it is getting deflected by what? A positive charge. It means what? He was knowing since most of the space of the atom is empty as the most of the alpha particles are able to pass through without any deflection. The whole of the mass along with the positive charges concentrated into a very small space which is called nucleus. Because of that only, those alpha particles which are coming across these nucleus are getting deflected by small or by the large angles. So this is how he concluded that whole of the mass and whole of the charge is actually is concentrated on a very, very small space in, in the atom which is called nucleus. Now after concluding that whole of the charge and the mass is concentrated to a very small space in the atom called nucleus, he gave us certain approximate ideas about the size of these, uh, this at the nucleus. According to this Rutherford's observation, the nucleus are of the size of 10 to the power minus 15 meters, which is also called one Fermi. And the atom is of the size of one Armstrong's unit, which is 10 to the power minus 10 meters. So he, this was his observations on the basis of the number of alpha particles passing through without any deflection and the number of alpha particles getting deflected by small and the large angles. So this nucleus is having whole of the po po uh, positive charge and the mass in the form of all protons plus neutrons that means are existing in this because we know these two, these, uh, these two together, which are called nucleons, are existing in this. Though that by that time, neutrons were not known. I am just telling you that the, the, these are the particles which are definitely contributes towards the mass. So whole of the mass and the protons, the positively charged particles are this. So this is how we say that the nucleus is positively charged. It's having a positive charge. Now, in order to conclude, and in order to place the electrons in the atom, Rutherford suggested that the electrons are present outside the nucleus in an atom and they are moving in the circular paths which are called orbits. Now, it was actually his compulsion because if he, if he would have said that the electrons are just lying outside the nucleus in an atom, then they are static definitely due to the electrostatic forces of attraction between proton, uh, proton and the electron, they would have actually landed on the nucleus. So it was his compulsion to make them what moving and therefore he said that they are moving in the circular paths around the nucleus which are called orbits. So this was his very simple explanation of an atomic model that whole of the mass and the charge is concentrated into a very very small space called nucleus which is having protons and some other particles which are actually contributing towards the nucleus, uh, nucleons or the mass and the electrons are present around the nucleus 
in an atom and moving in circular paths called orbit and since the number of protons and electrons are equal the, elect the atom remains electrically neutral. So this was his model but this model with the time faced a serious uh, uh, problems from the uh, physicist because it was not actually uh, able to explain certain physics basic physics phenomena and because of those reasons it got failed, it was rejected. Now let us find out first on what basis it was rejected. 